Coach Dan Gordon is a three-time author and executive trainer on sales and leadership. Fact, you are great at what you do, but you're probably not great at selling what you do. Coach Dan shows you how to sell easily, authentically, and in your own style. Better sales means more income, more time with your family, and a lot less stress. For over two decades, Coach Dan has helped thousands obliterate their limitations. He has served on the Women's Economic Forum, the Tip International, the Mankind Project, Teen Cancer America, and many others. We are honored to have Coach Dan Gordon on our show today and talk about authentic selling. And prospects want to hug you. Please welcome my guest, Coach Dan. Welcome everybody to Money 911, where we talk about health, wealth, and peace of mind. And I'm really excited today to talk with my guest, Coach Dan Gordon. And you know what's so exciting is, I always ask my guests, give me a title for the show, right? And, and where his come from was, authentic selling when prospects want to hug you. Okay. <laughs> That's so cool. Dan, welcome. I'm really glad to have you here. Thanks, Chris. This is really great. I, I appreciate you asking me to be on your show. I know that you've done a tremendous amount of work in this sphere and um, and you've helped a lot of people. And so it's really cool to be uh, in this with you and to, and to talk to you about this and hopefully be in service to your to your listeners. Yes, that's that's exactly what it's about because, you know, it's all part of healthy money in a sense of, you know, healthy money, happy life and, mm -hmm. and money doesn't buy you love. So, but when you get all these things in order, there's a piece that comes having it organized and, and there's a lot of misconceptions that people have, you know, because you, selling doesn't have to be icky, right? Mm, yeah. And maybe you could share some of the misconceptions that people really have about selling and how you help individuals overcome them. Okay. Yeah, sure. So I'll just like, I'll talk to you about it because I think that people will, will really relate. So Chris, I bet that you, when I say the word sell or salesperson, I would guess uh, a vision pops up in your head of a sales interaction that you had that you really didn't like. Would, would that be fair? Sure. Okay. And so, you know, in those sales interactions, uh, my guess the person was pushy or they were unkind or they were um they weren't too helpful w would that be fair to say that was your experience sure yeah right mm -hmm. and that's and, and as you know as you the listener are listening to this right now you're probably having that same thought you know maybe it was at a car dealership or a clothing store or, you know, an appliance store, Insurance like somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, the, like all the classic ones, you know? Yeah. Um, and so what happens is that your concept of sales get driven by your bad experiences. Mm -hmm. And the reason that happens is how our human operating system is set up, you know, we all know that we're drawn towards the things that we enjoy and we're repelled by the things that we don't enjoy. And it would be great if those were 50, 50, like it'd be great if like the things that we love, we're drawn towards and that's half of our life. And the other half is the things that we don't like, but in actuality, 75% of our thinking is focused on what we don't like. And only 25 is on what we do like. Right. So there's a big chunk of our brain that is focused on the things that we don't like, 75%. So when I start talking about selling, it revs up that 75%, right? right? You right. start thinking of all those sales interactions and then you start thinking, that's not what I want to do, right? I'm never going to be like that person. In fact, I'm not even going to call it sales because sales is that bad. Right. Yeah. And it's the a big part of the problem with selling is that there's such a low bar for entry 
anybody can be a salesperson, right? right? There is no certification. And if you think about it, like if there was no American Medical Association, right, or, you know, or, or doctors didn't have to take any exam, like the Chris, you could wake up tomorrow and say, you know something, I'm going to be a surgeon. That's what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to make business cards and it's going to say Chris Miller surgery, right? <laughs> Now, nothing against you, Chris, but I doubt that you'd be very good at that. No. You'd probably end up killing a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't suggest that you'd become a surgeon. And so then people would really hate doctors. Right? Imagine if that were true, you're sitting at a, at a, um, like at a, 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 like at a dinner party and you're sitting next to a doctor, right? And you go, oh my God, get away from me. Like doctors kill people, right? You'd have the same reaction right, right now if you're sitting next to a salesperson at a dinner party. Like, oh, great. And try to sell me something. I hate salespeople. So all of this, the reason I'm, I'm sharing all of this is to understand where your concept of salespeople come from and why your concept of salespeople is like that. Now, at the beginning of this, I asked you to think of you know, a salesperson, you, you know, you thought of somebody, an experience that you didn't like. Now I want you to think of a time where you bought something from someone or someone was helping you and you went away from the experience going, God, that was great. Like, I didn't even feel like they were selling me anything. You know, in fact, they didn't sell me. They just helped me. That's what a salesperson is. Right. 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 That's what right. it's supposed to be. There's not a lot right. of those, but that's what it's supposed to be. Exactly. And, right. and it's very cool because it's exactly the same consciousness around healthy money. And that's why so much of, you know, health, wealth, and peace of mind really is the same preconceived ideas and mindset people are locked into. That's a salesman, mm. right? Yeah, right. So that's how I, that's how my parents taught me how to handle money. Mm. Right. Same right. Kind, right. Same kind of yeah. a conception that people get locked in. And, or if you have a lot of money, you're this kind of person or you mm -hmm. don't hear that and judging ourselves. We're so judgmental. Right. Right. Yeah. Money, money is a really funny thing. I mean, you yeah. know, money is your business, right? Yeah. And it's so, it's fascinating to me, the way that people relate to money. Mm -hmm. Or even the fact that they think they relate to money because it's an inanimate object. Exactly. Right. It's energy. To it's stored energy, energy right? Green energy. Yeah. <laughs> you even want to use the word green because then it has connotations on it, <laughs> right? It's but right. it is, and you put a positive or a negative on it by the preconceived ideas mm. that you're born into, right? Yeah, and so you know, in talking about what an what an actual salesperson is, you know, you said, well, that's a good salesperson. And you're right. It is. It's also what a real salesperson is. Someone who's helpful, someone who's not pushy, but wants the best for you. Right. right? So they may not back down immediately, but that's because they care in the same way. When you go to a doctor and a doctor says, look, you really need to take this heart medication. You, you probably wouldn't say, Hey, don't be so pushy right? Let me decide this on my own, right? Because you'd say, wow, this guy or this woman, they really care about me. That's why they want to take the heart medication, me to take the heart medication, not to sell me something, but they have my best interest in mind. Right. That's what a salesperson is. A salesperson, a real salesperson has your best interest in mind. Everybody else who tries to put pressure on you, that's not a salesperson. That's just a fraudulent human being trying to use you. Right. Like an ATM. Mm -hmm. right? And so I set this standard because when I talk about sales, I just want to talk about what it actually is. Right. In the same way a doctor would say, hey, this person who said they were a surgeon but never went to medical school, that's not actually a doctor. Like you can't even call them a doctor. It's just, they're just not, they're a fraud. Right. So when you look at things that way, then it 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 opens up a different way of thinking about sales. And so for the people who are listening, who are business owners, you're, you're also a salesperson. You have to be because the only way for you to earn income is to encourage people to engage in your product or service, right? Is to quote unquote, sell them. And so it really, it, it then means how are you going to do that? 
right? How are you going to encourage people to buy? Well, a lot of people, they think I'm going to sell by not doing what I don't like about other salespeople, right? Like, okay, I'm not going to be pushy, right? I'm not going to uh, be mean. I'm not going to you know, be relentless. I'm not going to be all those things I don't like. And then what's left will be a good salesperson, right? But it's sort of like a basketball player saying, hey, teach me all of the fouls and that'll make me a great basketball player, which doesn't work, right? Because if you learn all the fouls you know, and not doing the fouls doesn't make you good at passing, it doesn't make you good at dribbling, it doesn't make you good at shooting, it doesn't make you good at anything other than not doing the things that get you thrown out of the game. So let's talk about what it is and how to be a great salesperson. Okay. Right. So give, maybe you could share a few of the key strategies or techniques that help people sell because in a way, when we're talking, you know, breaking down that word sell, mm -hmm. that's really what we're doing all the time with each other, even in relationships or, you know, yeah. your, your, your interaction, you go to the store everywhere. It's sort of a, you're a walking billboard sign. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And you are, you know, you listening right now, you are the best advocate for your business. And you are also, you also know more about your value than anybody else. So there's a few things that are really important when you go to sell what you do. One is to, is to remember that you're the smartest person in the room, right? When it comes to your product or service. So some of the questions that people ask may not be designed for you to express that your value. Some of the questions that people ask may be designed to kind of torpedo the sale because they're nervous about being sold. So you have to be aware of what the questions are and how to anticipate and understand the things that people are asking. Perfect example. When I start a conversation with someone talking about my coaching and they say, well, how much do you charge? That question is actually designed to get me to quote my price and for them to say, oh, I can't afford that. It's too expensive. <laughs> and then that takes them out of the sale. Now, the reason they're asking that question is because they're nervous about what I'm charging. They're nervous about having to say, oh, I don't know if I can afford that. They're nervous about the price. Like, there's a lot of things they're concerned about. And they're also, of course, very concerned that I am a fraud. Right? I'm just going to take their money and not give them any value. That's a lot of concerns. Now, rather than doing a deep dive on all those concerns, they're going to take the easiest way out. And the easiest way out is just to remove them from the sale, remove them from the situation. So if they ask, how much do you charge? And I tell them, and then they go, oh, that's too expensive. Now I can leave. That's great. They're not going to suffer any of those problems, but they're also not going to get the value that they want. Right. right. They're they're not going to increase their income. They're not going to become better at business. They're not going to have, they're not going to understand better ways of selling and negotiation and, and working through problems, like all those things that I give people. They're going to get none of them. And all they've gotten is they've gotten themselves out of a situation that they feel they're concerned about. Right. So I'm, I'm saying this is because when people ask you the question of how much do you charge, and they ask that right away, here's the response that that you want to get give. This is, this is what I say. I say something like, Hey, of course, we're going to talk about the money. Like, I mean, that's, that's going to be a part of this conversation. But if we start talking about the money right now, it's not going to make sense because we haven't talked about the things that I provide. All right. So I think it makes sense. If I talk about the valuable things that I provide them, when we talk about the money, then it'll, it'll make more sense because you know what you're paying for. Right. right now, if I tell you about the money, you don't know what you're paying for. It's just going to sound like a really bad deal. Right, right. right. So mm -hmm. would it be okay if we talked, if I talked about what I do and then we talk about the money? Would that be okay? Right. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of back up and to explain the strategy be, behind that, I'm giving a perfectly logical reason not to answer their question. I'm not saying I'm not going to answer it. What, what I'm saying is if I answer it right now, it's going to hurt them instead of help them. And the other thing that I'm doing is I'm asking them if it would be okay. I'm not telling them we have to do it this way. I'm just asking, would it be okay? Does this right. make sense? 
I'm right. getting their permission. Mm -hmm. That's good. Now, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. And in that way, they feel in control. They don't feel like I'm being pushy. They realize, hopefully, that I'm doing it this way because it will serve them the best. And they can always say no. Right. Right. That's great. So, so is there is there a role for self confidence mm -hmm. in in cells? Does that have anything to do with it? Somewhat. So self confidence comes from the fact that you know that you're being in service to your client mm -hmm. or your prospect, and so that's why I say to remind yourself that you're the smartest person in the room because. Your ability to help them depends on you helping them through the fear that they're facing. Right. So someone comes into a sales meeting with you. They're worried about, like I said, they're worried about taking being taken advantage of. It's too expensive, having to say no and make, you know, they feel bad about like all of these concerns that they have. So your job as a salesperson is to gently walk them through all of these concerns. So your confidence comes from your being focused on helping them and helping them. Isn't just doing what they say. Like if someone says, ah, well, I'm going to think about it and go, okay, I don't want to put any pressure on you. You're not helping them. You're actually doing a disservice. So when people say, oh, I'm going to think about it. The thing I say is, oh, that's great. You should think about it. Like I don't do anything without thinking about it. Why don't we talk about what you're thinking about? So then I can answer your questions. Right, right, right. right. So now to some people, to, pardon me, to, to some people that sounds pushy. Oh, oh, I, I wouldn't do that. I'm being too pushy. But what I look at it is, is I'm being helpful, right? They're, they're saying, I'm going to think about it because they're feeling fear. They want to run away from the situation and not get the value. But instead I'm re-engaging them in the conversation so I can talk about the things that they're, up, you know, that they're concerned about. You you were saying? Oh, well, I was just seeing how you would develop people, the communication skills in individuals. Mm -hmm. How 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 do you develop that? How do you coach people through that? Yeah. the The thing that I focus on is what I call selling authentically. Okay. And selling authentically is really about um, being honest, and. You know, everybody who's listening is saying, well, I'm honest. Right. The fact is, when you're in a sales conversation and somebody starts giving you objections, you start thinking about how to overcome objections. Now, that's really not being honest. And I can tell you that, that when you think about overcoming objections, you've already lost the sale. Mm -hmm. So selling authentically is being open with what's happening right there in the moment. So someone says, I'm going to think about it. Instead of doing a little trick, I, I do what, what I do. Like, okay, you should think about it, right? I'm staying on their side. I'm normalizing all of their experiences. Mm -hmm. Like they say, wow, this is really expensive. Right. Like I know, like I, I get it. I, I'm pricey, right? I'm not telling them that they're wrong. I'm not telling them, or I'm not making up an excuse. Oh, well, you, you have to invest in yourself. Like I've had yeah. so many coaches, yeah. you know, say that, well, right. but you have to invest in yourself. This is an investment. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Instead of being honest with, with me, like, yeah, this is expensive. I get it. Mm -hmm. right? right. So selling authentically is being on their side. It, and, and that may sound a little bit counterintuitive because if their side is, I don't want to buy, why, why are you on their side? But really what their side is, I'm concerned. And what you're saying is I hear and acknowledge your concerns and your concerns are valid. Let's talk about your concerns. I don't want that's to make good, your yeah. concerns wrong. Mm -hmm. That's really good because that's selling with integrity and ethics, mm -hmm. right? And, and that is so important today because there's not a lot of that. <laughs> there is. Right. Yeah. And I mean, just to be authentic and have integrity, like, you know, when I talk with my clients, I own what I've, I've owned what I've sold, sell for yeah. 30 years. 
I don't buy other things and say, you should buy that, but I don't want it. Right. right? That's just, I'm, I am what I sell or I am what I talk about. <laughs> At least we, tr we want to be, that's, you know, honest. Mm. And that, that's a beautiful place because that's honest, authentic, right? That's what you're yeah. talking about. And unfortunately, not everybody's taught. You almost have to be taught how to do that because people have been taught into a fake sales presentation, mm -hmm. right? And you got to yeah. be this whatever present. Yeah. Right, right. It, it, it becomes challenging when you get your ego involved and it's really mm -hmm. easy for that to, to happen. Yeah. The moment someone says something like, mm, I don't know, I don't think this is right for me. Inside, without realizing it, you kind of go to war with them. There's sort of this, well, how dare you? Like, how dare you tell me that this isn't valuable, right? And then you start that that's where the overcoming objections things start happening, right? Mm -hmm. You you're you're on opposite sides of the table. Instead, it's important to normalize all of their experiences. I mean, when somebody tells me I'm expensive, and I hear that a lot, I say, I I know that feeling. I know the feeling of wanting to buy something and feeling like I can't afford it. It's a terrible feeling. Right. Like I Right. I, I yeah. get that you want to yeah. work with me. Yeah. And so let's talk about this feeling that you're having right now. And let's like talk about what it is. Right? That's an authentic conversation instead of telling them that they're wrong. I, in the middle of sales meetings, I've said to my, my prospect, I said, you know what? Like we both know this is not going well. <laughs> like we can both feel that this is, we're having a hard time here. You know, you don't like this and 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 I don't like this and we're we're kind of at war with each other. So can like let's just talk about what's going on. Mm -hmm. That's right. authentic because that's right. happening in the moment. That's real, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and when you start having those kind of conversations, people trust you more. And that's it. And a sale isn't isn't a transaction where you sell something and they buy it. A sale is when you develop a level of trust. And mm -hmm. in that trust, you're helping guide someone. Because once someone trusts you, then you can start guiding them to the decision of being happily engaged with your product or service. I mean, I, I can tell you, Chris, I have a very high success rate in what I do. And part of it is because I'm particular about who I work with. You got to be what I call a badass entrepreneur. Uh, but my high um, success rate. And the the reason I'm particular about who I work with is because I have these authentic conversations. Mm -hmm. And I'm not willing to work with someone if I don't believe that they can get value out of my coaching. That's, that's the way to be. That's being honest. Right. Exactly. And I think a lot of, you know, I've been selling for decades, and I never mm -hmm. looked at it as selling until, you know, I got learned about what people do but you know when i first started i just was trying to help people yeah. and then i came to what you talked about where you know oh these people are reacting like you know i know i'm really trying to help you yeah and, and learned about that but what i saw around me was people get stuck in fear of rejection mm. right like mm -hmm. that you know i mean it's it's not like, you know, you're selling yourself, but in a way yeah. it is. So it's just sure. the authentic is going beyond the fear, right? Mm -hmm. Of rejection yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And, and that is, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that is a big thing when I teach people how to sell is that fear of rejection. Mm -hmm. And so when we dive into it, when we start looking at it, instead of just talking about it, we start... Um, deconstructing what that fear and what rejection is made out of. And what it is made out of is some very old human programming. So when we lived in caves and when we lived in those communities, you know, a couple million years ago, what was going on is that human beings, homo sapiens had to live in communities in order to survive. And in fact, the reason that other species like the Neanderthals died off um, 
they've discovered is that they lived in smaller groups or individually and they could not survive, right? So mm -hmm. our survival as a species is based on community. And that's why human beings are so, are so community-based, mm -hmm. right? And so what if you were ejected from the group, it was literal death, right? You couldn't right. protect yourself. You couldn't right. hunt enough to feed yourself. Mm -hmm. like you would die. Mm -hmm. And so flash forward a couple million years, that programming is still deep within us. Right. If I'm rejected by my community, I will die. And so I tell people this because I, I, I tell them when you're selling, you have a couple million years of evolution working against you. <laughs> right. But the benefit is that we have this gigantic prefrontal cortex, this big brain that we can use to remind ourselves that we're not in any danger. Right? So when we start right. to feel that burn of rejection, we use our big brain to say, I'm not in any danger. Right. I'm, I'm having an emotional reaction to a problem that doesn't exist. Right. And, the, and the way that you move through it is you stay focused on the other person. Mm -hmm. Not what am I struggling with? Not what am I feeling? But what are they going through? What right. are they feeling? What's the, what's the impact that they're having right now? And that's where selling with authenticity really comes into play. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm having an authentic conversation, I'm not talking or thinking about my fear of rejection. What I'm talking about is their struggle with moving forward. Right, right. Oh, that's so important. And, and for me, it's not having any regrets so that if I can pour out, you know, not hold back and just give... Mm -hmm whether they you know are going to take it or not but just give everything that i can yeah then i'm then i've you know that that fulfills me whether they buy anything or not like i right. do a lot of just sharing and giving and turn mm -hmm. people on to ideas that they may never have had before and maybe they'll go off and never see me again but then i know inside my i did the best that i could with what i had right right and that's yeah the, i you know people are often su often surprised uh, they think that I have a very high close rate when it comes to selling, but I don't. I have a 30% close rate. Okay. And I keep it at 30% for two reasons. One, if it goes above 30, it means that I'm uh, I'm not charging enough. Okay. Right. So if I go from 30 to 35% close rate by keeping my prices lower, I'm actually working harder. Right. Because yeah, if I raise people. my price, right. yeah, right. Because if I raise my prices, I'm working with less people. I'm spending less time and I'm making more money. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one thing. The other thing is if it goes above uh, 30, I also think that I'm not helping enough people. Right. right. I'm, I'm way too focused on selling something that I am in providing value. Mm -hmm. And I, I provide a lot more value than I'm ever paid for. That's great. That's how you should be. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That That's complete. A complete circle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, in this moment right now, I have nothing to, to sell. Like, I'm not going to talk about some program I want your listeners to buy into. What I am going to do is I'm going to give something away for free. Great. Okay. Tell them so, how. <laughs> right. I wrote a book. One of, uh, one of my books is called Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story and Take Action. And the reason I called it that is because 90% of the struggle that you're facing right now is based on a story that you're telling yourself. And these stories are so pervasive that we don't even know their stories. They just feel real. Mm -hmm. right? When people tell me I can't afford that, I often say, I don't believe that. It's a story that you're telling yourself. Right. Right. And they're like, no, no, no. If you looked at my bank account, you would say, I don't have the money. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I don't doubt that you have created a lot of evidence to support your story. Mm -hmm. But it's still just a story. And if you change that story, I can't afford it into I create tremendous value that people want to buy, suddenly that story changes mm. and your world changes. Right. So if you're willing to accept that a lot of your holdbacks are stories that you're telling yourself, even if you have a lot of evidence to support your story, you can get past those stories and get what you want. I call it jumping the gap because on one side of the cliff is where you are and the other side is where you is everything that you want. 
Yeah. And when you jump that gap, when you kill those stories, you can take action and literally create everything in your life that you want. That's so true. to get this book for free, <laughs> all you have to do is text the word GAP, G-A-P, to this number, 213-409-8366. I'll say that again. The number is 213-409-8366 and text the word GAP, G-A-P. Text the word GAP to 213-409-8366 and you get my free book, Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story and Take Action. There you go. And they can take action by doing that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, that sounds great because that's, I bet you got some tips on jumping the gap. And that's, yeah. you know, there's a lot of new trends, right? A lot of changes in, in the world mm -hmm. and on a lot of levels. And cells yeah. even in cells and and how do people adapt to the do you feel this keep on going the same way that you've always been doing it do you or do you go mm -hmm. with with the trend um are you going ai on everything <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good question you know it's it's funny it's like um you really can't rely on something that has worked in the past working in the future, right? Yeah. People will say, hey, if, if it isn't That's broke, right. don't fix it, right? Yeah. And when I hear that, I always say, why don't you ask your local Blockbuster employee if that's true, <laughs> right? <laughs> a, right? Ask someone at Radio Shack if that's true. Like Bed right. Bath & Beyond just went out of business, right? Because yeah. they were all those companies were doing the things that they had always done. Mm -hmm. And so you, you really have to be in a constant state of innovation. Yeah. And the same thing is true of selling. Selling authentically is an innovative way of looking at sales, right? That I, I took the last decade of how I did this and what's working and deconstructed my process and sort of built it in a way that I can teach it to people. Yeah. And yet this way is always evolving. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you like a, an example of, of that. I have... Um, 25 different responses that I've created in, that people can use in an authentic conversation to build authenticity. So one of these responses is, hey, I get it. Right? Someone says, wow, that's really expensive. I don't think I can, I can afford it. Rather than saying, well, it's not really expensive or you know, well, well, what about the value? Someone says, hey, it's really expensive. I can't afford it. I say, hey, I get it. I totally understand where you're coming from. And I don't disagree. Okay. Now we're engaged in a conversation rather than a war. Right. That's good. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I say things like, mm -hmm. you know what? Before you make up your mind, can I just throw one thing at you? Right. right. That's another authentic sales tool. Because what I'm doing is I'm essentially interrupting their fear of saying, I can't afford it or I don't want it or let me think about it. I'm interrupting that pattern. Mm -hmm. that they use to keep themselves out of the things that they want or need. And I'm injecting a new idea for them to think about that opens up a deeper conversation. Yeah. Right. So all of these things, it's um, the 25, it's now over 25 uh, statements that you can use to help people when they're struggling with having opposition like thoughts. And actually if, you want to download that, you can download that as well, just like my my book. And to download that, just text the number 25 to that same number that you texted the Gap book, which is 213-409-8366. 213-409-8366. Text the number 25. 25. And you can download those 25 plus statements for generating authentic conversations. And that that's worth the price of tea of, <laughs> of the show. <laughs> no, seriously, I, that yeah. those are those are very very important. I'll yeah. even text twenty five. Please, whatever. <laughs> and the, no, and the thing is, I so, keep it's so important. Yeah, I, and to your point, Chris, I keep adding to those, right? Because I mm. am in a constant state of evolving what I'm doing. Because I know at some point. I'm going to look at some of those and go, you know, I just don't think those fit anymore. Right. I, just, right. And so yes. I'm, I'm always evolving what I'm doing. It's so true. And that's what I found in three decades of doing 
it's never been stagnant, you know? I mean, yeah. you know, the old days we used to put flyers in the newspaper, right? Right. Yeah. Newspapers went out of business. So, mm -hmm. right, it's just a constant flow. And that's just life. You just stay in the flow and stay open and receptive. I mean, even though, you know, I, I'm always learning, you know, I'm, I might have done it a million times, but I'm, yeah. I always got my ears on. That's my daddy taught me, right? <laughs> stay learning. That's great. But it's been really neat talking with you, Coach Dan. <laughs> and is there any cherries on the top that you might want to leave with everybody here? Yeah, sure. Stay open to exactly where you are when you're speaking with someone about your product or service. You know, everybody talks about the elevator pitch. Right. But when you have a pre-programmed, pre-planned statement mm -hmm. about what it is that you do, it's not authentic. In the same way, if you sat down on a first date and you had some sort of pitch that you gave <laughs> to this person that you're meeting, it right. wouldn't feel authentic. And yeah. frankly, if people sold, or pardon me, if people dated the way that most people sold in the first five minutes of meeting someone, you'd say, hey, you want to go back to my place? Right, which really wouldn't generate an ongoing relationship. Right. In the same way, you could you could sell that way. Maybe someone's going to buy that way, but it's not going to generate a deeper relationship. And when you're in a sales conversation, your goal isn't to sell something. Your goal is to build a relationship. Your goal is to build an ongoing relationship because that way you can continue to provide value to that person. You can continue to offer them more products, more services, other aspects of what you do. And it is a lot more productive to get someone who is currently or who is a current customer to become a future customer and a continued customer. It's a lot easier than to get a new customer. Right. It takes one tenth of the time. Right. So focus on building those relationships, not on the sale. And you will never be lost for having clients and customers. Words of wisdom, my friend. That's very, very good advice. Absolutely. And again, I want to thank you for being here on Money 911. Make sure you guys subscribe. we got a lot of good shows coming through. And make sure you reach out to Coach Dan and, and access the free gifts and have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And you can also uh, hear my podcast it's called For Badass Entrepreneurs Only. And it is for oh. badass entrepreneurs only. I'm sure th those are the only people listening to your show, Chris, Absolutely. because you got to have some courage to totally. face the things that you're sharing with people. You got to you got to leap out in faith and know the hand will be there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Jumping free. Right. All right. Well, we'll we'll be listening for sure. Thank, Thank you, you so Dan. much, Chris. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. All right. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.